and things got a little out of hand. You know, I went 600, 900. Eventually, I went up to 1.5 grams. What is up YouTube and welcome back to my channel. My name is Elon Muscular and this is the fourth video in my new series entitled My Experience. This video is recommended by a subscriber who asked that I talk about my experience with DECA based cycles. So DECA only cycles or DECA D ball cycles. This is something that you know I talked about before in the past on YouTube a lot on a different channel. And I'm just gonna talk about my history with DECA only cycles, how I got into them. Uh, why I decided to use this sort of strategy and whether I use it now with myself, with my clients, and whether I basically think that DECA-only cycles are a good idea anymore. So I learned about DECA-only cycles because back in the day there was a video with Tony Huge, who I followed for a long time, enhanced athlete, and he had a phone call with a guy talking about DECA-only cycles, and this guy was Tan Clark. He has a YouTube channel now, but back then he did not have a YouTube channel. All he had was this exclusive Facebook group called Tan's Bodybuilding Camel Cult or something like that. So I requested to join the group and I was accepted to join the group and I actually found out that a lot of those guys were fans of me and I was looking for you know different strategies to enhance myself because at the time I really, I, did, I was not working with a coach, I did not have a lot of information. Uh, this was back in like 2017, 2018, 2017, there was not a lot of information out there on YouTube like there is right now uh, about good safe enhancement strategies and I've always looked for safe enhancement strategies I've always been interested in how can I make you know the most muscle that I possibly can with the least impact on my health in a negative manner and this is kind of how this guy tan was positioning this deck only cycle he was saying you know testosterone has a lot of negative side effects especially when you start to push it uh, further and further past physiological dosages so if you're just cruising on you know trt it might not be that bad but when you start to go to 500 750 a thousand if you really want to reach these large dosages of you know androgens and anabolic load in order to put on really a ton of muscle then deca is actually a better solution and then there started to be all these resources of all these uh, old school guys talking about how they actually didn't use testosterone they used uh, deca as their primary compound in a lot of their cycles and the reason for this was because Testosterone has a lot of side effects in terms of uh, acne affecting your hair. Obviously, I'm, I'm bald. I took testosterone out and went bald, although I would be bald anyways. But testosterone has all these side effects like, you know, it ruins your skin, acne, hair. And actually, there's some documents of Golden Era guys talking about this and why they didn't use testosterone and why they chose DECA instead. So me being, you know, who I am, I thought, all right, maybe it's worth a shot because I idolized these Golden Era guys really and their opinions were, were really what pushed me over the edge not necessarily tan clark although he did have a lot of incredible transformations in his group where he showed people over the course of six weeks really changing their bodies um, but the cycles that he was putting them on were huge and what he was saying uh, his philosophy at the time I, I can't speak for what he says now uh, because i don't really follow it anymore but his philosophy at the time was um if you want to make a great transformation with DECA only, you should jump into using a lot right away because DECA aromatizes a lot less than testosterone does. But he said about five times less. So if you want to have all the sex drive benefits and all the normal benefits of having normal estrogen levels, you have to use at least 600 milligrams of DECA, but you can use up to 1.5 grams, two grams. Some people were using over two grams uh, relatively safely. So I was like, shit, well, I mean, that sounds like a lot. I've never taken that much before, but people are saying that it's safe. They're having great transformations. And I did not have the research to say otherwise. So I figured, well, fuck it. I mean, I'm not going to die in, in a couple of weeks, so I'll give it a shot. And I started the cycle at 600 milligrams of DECA and I figured I'll work my way up from there. And things got a little out of hand. You know, I went 600, 900. Eventually I went up to 1.5 grams. 
And I think I discontinued the cycle at like week six or week seven. I kept escalating the dosage, but as I brought it higher and higher, I felt worse and worse. And I don't think that this is necessarily because of DECA because I have nothing against DECA and I use it a lot in my cycles now and I like DECA obviously at a much lower dosage, but it's just that, you know, having that high of a load of anabolics in your system for me just feels like shit. Every time I bring my total, like, you know, load over a gram, I just feel really bad. And that's what happened again this time and I discontinued it. And I've tried it before with like 750 tests and 600 DECA and had similar uh, side effects and discontinued it as well. I just personally for me less is more and I really don't feel comfortable going that high because I start to feel the negative effects on my health like immediately happening and on this DECA only cycle and why I chose to discontinue it I was gaining weight super super fast and I started at like a low uh, I started at about like maybe 190 190 uh, five pounds and by the end of these six seven weeks i was literally up to like 220 pounds like i was blowing up really quickly so i understand how you know all these impressive transformations on his page were made but at the end of the day really it's just loading people with tons of drugs and then they grow i mean it's not rocket science so what did i think about like actually the pharmacology of DECA only and how do I look at it now as compared to adding testosterone in cycles or different anabolics into the cycle? Well, I think that, you know, I've seen a lot of research since that point of DECA being, you know, hard on the body in terms of that. It's really hard to uh, get your normal testosterone levels back after you take a DECA cycle because it has a really long half-life, first of all, because of the, you know, de uh, decanoate ester or whatever it has a long half-life but then past that the metabolites like really stay in your body for a really long time and there are some studies where people are trying to get their normal testosterone levels back to normal after taking deca durbolin for a long time and it takes some people more than a year to for the deca to fully clear out of their body to have no metabolites anymore so that their natural testosterone levels can replenish and this is definitely not what Tayan Clark was saying. He was saying that DECA is actually, you know, as easy, if not easier to recover from uh, than testosterone. And a lot of these golden era guys said that as well. But what I realized over time is that these golden era guys have absolutely no science to substantiate anything that they ever said because the science did not exist. All the science that, you know, we have now just really came out recently in terms of, you know, how the, the, the effects of these drugs on your brain, your heart, your liver, your kidneys, how exactly they affect these things and what dosages they affect these things on different populations, on rats, on humans. This is all re recent data. So back in the day, they all they had was bro logic and bro logic is bad logic. And what these golden eyes era guys were saying was like, oh, DECA is it's an anabolic. It's not like testosterone, which is more androgenic. So it, all it's doing is building muscle and then after you get off of it everything comes back to normal and there are no issues and that's that was kind of like the predominant thinking going around like in that tribe of people and that just like really was not my experience you know after the deca cycle i uh, got my testosterone checked after trying to pct and everything and it was still like really low and even a while after trying to pct was still quite low so I don't see how it would be easier to recover from. Uh, the next thing that they were saying was that, you know, it wouldn't give you side effects in terms of a hair loss and oily skin and stuff like that. That I did see. I didn't notice any extra hair loss, although I'm already bald, but a lot of these guys in this group run deco only cycles because they're scared of testosterone. Obviously, testosterone converts to dihydrotestosterone and can trigger hair loss if you are prone to it. But on the other hand, I know a lot of guys who've taken a lot of testosterone and still have completely full heads of hair, never experienced any balding or thinning of their hair from taking massive amounts of testosterone, trenbolone, masteron, anything that typically would be associated with hair loss. So I think that if you're somebody who is prone to hair loss and really worried about it in that like you're just simply not willing to take testosterone because it's going to speed up your hair loss and you are predisposed to it like me. So it is an inevitability, but you are trying to uh, prevent it from happening for as long as possible. Then if the option is, you know, take SARMs or take nandrolone based cycles, I would say nandrolone based cycles probably make more sense. And then using uh, TRT, 
like very low dose to cruise in between those nandrolone cycles because after those nandrolone cycles it's going to be harder to regenerate your normal testosterone levels now i can't really speak for you know phenopropionate because i didn't take that and then get my testosterone levels checked and all that uh, i don't know if that would suppress you as much as decanoate because the phenopropionate like the normal durable and you know just it has a much shorter half-life and it is out in and out of the body much quicker there's less water retention and that's actually what mike menser used he liked the durable and at about 900 milligrams a week so this is something that was used a lot in the golden era people like deca but they also really liked npp you know the nandrolone they called it durable and back in the day it was also very popular so a lot of the golden era cycles you know and everyone has talked about this rick drayson included uh included nandrolone primabolin and then uh another anabolic like uh, an oral like a d-ball or winstrol or uh, oral primabolin or anivar so that is like kind of like the golden era stack and then in recent times people started to use more testosterone around the 90s because testosterone is really cheap. They didn't start to use it because it's better for health or, or anything like that, but just because testosterone is much cheaper than these other things and much easier to get access to, is more of a supply chain thing. And then powerlifters were really using a lot of testosterone. And I noticed that as this kind of high intensity, more uh, bodybuilding became more linked with powerlifting and it became more about lifting heavy weights and strength as opposed to sarcoplasmic growth and just pumping up the muscles, which was really, really the focus in the 70s and early 80s. And then in the mid 80s to 90s to 2000s, it became this heavy, you know, always lifting heavy, high intensity sort of style popularized by Dorian Yates. At the same time, testosterone became more popular. So I think that there could be some cross link there and that testosterone really increases your strength strength much more than DECA does. And I noticed that on my cycle as well. I wasn't really getting the strength increases proportionate to the size increases. And I do think that there have been studies as well to show that DECA Durabolin does not help with strength as much as testosterone helps with strength. So my overall thoughts on DECA only cycles is that I think that, you know, if you're looking for a certain look, there is a certain look that you can only get with DECA-based cycles that you can't get on testosterone-based cycles, assuming that your genetics um, will cause you to have certain side effects from testosterone. So I do think that DECA-based cycles, you know, based on the golden era guys and stuff like that, they can have sort of a cleaner look where everything is just a little bit more crisp and there's not as much you know, androgenicity in the skin and the hair and in just the general look of the face and stuff like that, um, the bloating. You know, in the book uh, by Robert Kerr, written in the 70s about anabolics, he talked about DECA being a base and DECA being something that people use for cutting. And I think that if you do DECA only they're, they're, and you are on a diet, there's not a ton of water retention. But in terms of a long-term enhancement strategy and not just looking at it as a single cycle, uh, I think testosterone as a base makes way more sense. And also something that they talked about that I don't agree with in the tan camel cult is that they were saying that even a little bit of testosterone will cause you to have way more side effects if you add a uh, nandrolone is a primary anabolic. So even if you take 100 milligrams of testosterone and 600 milligrams of nandrolone, you will get way more side effects than if you just took 600 milligrams of nandrolone alone and you have a much higher risk for gynecomastia, erectile dysfunction, when you actually combine them as opposed to just taking one. And I don't agree with that because I think that the best way to run a cycle now that I would uh, recommend, you know, and that I personally do, is a base of testosterone and then anabolics on top of that, although I wouldn't take the DECA that high, I think that primabolin is a great primary anabolic and DECA is a great support in terms of joints and stuff like that. So I personally wouldn't bring DECA over 200 milligrams uh, with the testosterone. I just don't see any additional benefit there that primabolin doesn't give if you're looking for the best possible strategy. So just talking about like long-term enhancement strategies and how I look at it these days, I just don't see DECA being used as the primary anabolic because of all the negative side effects of DECA, like I already stated in terms of the negative effects that they found on the heart with DECA, the, uh, how difficult it is to recover from a cycle after taking DECA, the negative effects on the brain that they found with dandrolone based or a progesterone based uh, compounds like DECA. So with all this new research coming out about all the negative side effects, potential side effects of DECA, I would not abuse it 
And by abuse, I mean taking it over therapeutic dosages, so over like about 200 uh, milligrams a week and using it as your primary anabolic. I don't think that it's really safe uh, long term for that purpose. Uh, so I think it's really important to make the distinction between short term, DECA only cycle, 10 weeks, making good gains without losing my hair or having like uh, as many side effects as I might have on test versus long term, DECA only is what I do and I regularly take 900 milligrams of DECA Durabolin, you know, or Nandrolone phenylpropionate for a cycle like Menser did and die from a heart attack at 50 years old. So I think it's really important to make those distinctions and I think that, you know, the Tyans cult, they don't really make that distinction as well as I would like them to. And they, I think that they say that DECA only is more safe than it is, uh, according to like pretty much all the research that I've seen when I really looked into it and, and wanted to know like what did I really do to my body and what did I really put myself through. In terms of D-ball and adding D-ball to DECA, I'll be very short with it. The reason that people put them together is because Again, we're just trying to avoid the testosterone side effects and D-ball gives you the estrogen benefits that testosterone would. So it helps keep your dick hard. It helps keep your mood good and stuff like that. So you can use a smaller amount of DECA if you put it together with D-ball. But D-ball itself has been shown to have so many negative side effects, specifically on mental cognition and long-term uh, mental health and health of your brain. So when you take something that you know, has been shown to have negative effects on your heart and brain like nandrolone and combine it with something that has negative effects of your brain and lipids like D-ball. Uh, I just think that it combines for something that is not as healthy as just taking, you know, a little bit more testosterone or testosterone and premobolin or something like that. So that is my overall opinion on DECA only cycles. I hope this was not too confusing. I'm not trying to, you know, shit on anything that the Tans Camel Cult is doing. I appreciate them. I think that they're they are, you know, pioneers in this space, bringing back these old school strategies and talking about them and experimenting with them. And I am all about people, you know, experimenting with things and trying new things out. It's just that. When we make recommendations and we talk about what's the best way to do things and what's the safe way to do things, I think that it really has to be based in all the research that we have as opposed to just anecdotally, you know, interventionally, I took this for this amount of weeks and I had good results and no side effects that I saw like actively happening to me. Um, there's an important distinction there between long term and short term. And I think that these guys and DECA only cycles in general and golden era guys and all these people that like DECA only really were looking at the short term and their benefits in the short term and not really the big picture. So I hope you guys like this video. If you like the video, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Check out the Bodybuilding Lifestyle Podcast because you will love the conversations that I have with the guys there. Thanks for watching. Peace.